Let me open our sessions. Move to our, my talk. Uh, my research focuses on prompt, non prompt lift on discrimination study with BDT in CTH multi lift confinal state at ASUS detectors. Uh, I worked with, together with collaboration with you, reaching for Texas, Austin of Texas University today. And here, first slide. Yeah. And our research was going in the term in Atlas project. Next slide, please. A uh, few words about physics motivations. Uh, I worked in the Higgs group. Uh, in, the, in Atlas projects has one big Higgs group. It is divided to eight physics subgroups, and one of these subgroups is Ichito, and one of the channel of these subgroups is CTH, with silicon groups. And our physical motivations that is its stage measuring directly the top you call a coupling and uh, which are considered uh, proportional to the top quartz mark, for example, for all fermions quartz, in our case, in top quartz marks. And as you know, we have a uh, two major decay each Higgs decay, each Higgs BB, it's dominate decay, but uh, this decay has a irreducible background with CT bar plus BB. So we're working in decay in each to WW in second largest ratio ratio. And from theoretic evaluation uh, for the proc section CTH uh, at 8 TV we have 130 bar and expect 270 events. And TTH events with uh, as you know, run one as a 21 fifth uh, reverse fifth bar. And uh, do you hear us on this internet? My smiling? Yes, yes. I, I Hello? Do you hear us? Yes, yes, I am okay. here. Okay. Okay. On the left side, on the slide, you can see the <laughs> payment diagrams is the production Higgs per zone associated with top quarks, top and top quarks. And we have for TTH 588 events, for TTH with 4W plus 2B, the TTH 2W, uh, 2W plus 2B, 172 events, and for TTH uh, 2W to ZZ plus 2B, to be it's 72 events. It's all theoretical predict what we have to do before run one. Next slide, please. Uh, so we have, have uh, in TTH five uh, channel. Each each will be uh, sorry. Uh, X to the K to W tau tau and Z Z. And it's TTH to same sign liptons. It's TTH to three liptons. It's TTH four liptons and stage two lipton plus one tau and stage one lipton plus two tau. Uh, as right outside, you can see the same diagram where you have uh, TTH for three lipton. As you will, as you see, you can one first talk decay to W and P, X to W and uh, and stop decay to B, uh, W boson and P. So, as a final state, we have uh, one, two, three liptons and one neutrino, big quark, two big quark, and several neutrino. Next slide, please. Uh, so, about few words about the background. For example, on the table, you can see full channel. For example, if a uh, same signs, it's meaning two lepton, electron, electron, plus five features. Five chains. Uh, two lepton, electron, ion, it's opposite sides, the five chip. Plus five jet, two lepton, ion, ion, five jet, uh, two lepton, electron, electron, plus four jets, and uh, three lepton, in, uh, working in this decay and is in this mode. As you can see from the four columns, uh, it's the ground from top, it's the ground for TCW, it's the ground from 
TTZ and uh, VV, and Z plus Z in, in process. And if we shift to this line, to this row, you can see we have a 11.6%, have a from all background out from the TT bar. Next slide, please. Um, so now we go uh, move to our idea. Our idea is used MBA. MBA is multivariate analysis uh, and boost decision tree to separate prompt from prompt leptons. What is mean prompt and no prompt lepton? If this lepton comes from Higgs, it's from lepton. If this lepton comes from BGX, it's meaning it's not from lepton. So for separate background from signal, we use this in multivariate analysis. Next slide, please. Strategy of research. We study round one. First, our step is matching procedure mark lepton as prompt and no prompt based on truth information in non takarova data. And last stage, employ PPC for separate from that non prompt lepton. We use this sample from uh, full simulation sample. This sample after reconstructions, but this sample has full truth information, which gives to us possibility to use prompt and mark lepton as prompt or not not non prompt lepton. Next slide, please. Uh, our preselections. It's neon cuts matching with. Ah, uh, sorry. It's uh, neon cuts. I I think. Um, it's working? Okay. Uh, Mion cuts. For Mion cuts, we're using matching data 0.05, eta 2.47, Mion, we use type Mions. For electron cuts, it's matching delta R, uh, sorry, 0 0.1, uh, eta 2.47, and we use electro cuts, very tight electrical cuts for electrons. Next slide, please. A uh, few words about the push decision tree. In input variables, we use next six variables. PT, eta, sin D0, Z0, ETCON, divide PT, PTCON, divide PT. Uh, para BDT parameter is we're using Adaboost algorithm and uh, depth equals C and trees, 203 trees. Uh, I, I tried to pass some technical details, I think, you don't understand what we're talking about. Okay, it's okay. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. I, I passed the several slides because I have no time. Next, next. Okay, okay. So we use some algorithm. Some tool is name of psychic law. In psychic law, we use algorithm BDT push decision tree. And what we done? We compile our result, result from BDT and result from standard cuts. For example, this point comes with standard cuts. This point will come from standard cuts. And this is the size on the Top of the slide, it can be two plots, and the bottom of the slide is same plot, but in two points. Just as you can see this point at our line. So it's our line of curve. If you take this efficiency on the axis side, you can signal efficiency. If you can this side, you can see background rejection. So if you take same efficiency, for example, as we Receive after the applied standard cut, you can see our worker has more back rejection, and we can use this worker, for example, and reduce background. Next slide, please. Ah, sorry. Next slide, please. Okay. It's same zoom for it's same plots and the past slide in one. Just one plot and in zoom. You can see clearly here points after the standard cuts and our curve. 
And you can see from this, from same efficiency, we have a <coughs> we have a big background rejection. Okay, next slide. Uh, same 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 slide for myons. I don't repeat. It's it was for electron. Same slide for myon. Next slide. Uh, same slide for myon in zoom side, and you can see point for after standard cut and our curve. Next slide. Uh, on this slide, we made uh, validation. Uh, we take 50 curve and show that all the curve doesn't matter about samples in the random sum. In the random still, we have an identical uh, rock curve. And all rock curve from our end sample give a better result than a, a result after standard cuts, after red points on the slides. Next slide. Um, next slide. And next. 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 Ah. And it's very important result, and I uh, main our result at present time. As you know, this is called the stable is cut flow. And the left, left side of left side of the slide, we can see cut flow after apply standard selection cut. And, uh, and you can see this first figure 6.10 uh, for TTH, it means it's for signal, and 45.38 for TTH, but it's not for background. It's two points to figure we're getting after uh, applying standard selection card. When we apply our BDT, uh, we receive next figure is 6.16, it's meaning uh, we have 10% increase of signal, and for TT bar, 26.74, uh, it's meaning closer to 5, 15% uh, reduce of background. is meaning for us results, because this, this result shows that our methods is working, and we can't increase signal, and reduce background. And our uh, summary, next slide. Summary, yeah. just uh, use BDT for lepton. Instant rect rectangular cuts, it means uh, standard selection cuts. Uh, cut flow results show 15% less than TT bar and 10% for TTH and compare the standard selection cut. And our plans repeat all this all this research for round two, uh, apply circuit learn and our BDT for round two. Uh, in case of our improvement, progress to use BDT as of a main Lipton selection method. Next slide. Next. In, uh, it's our, uh, in our um, article as a red line, I show that I, uh, after NZ one of the after of the Atlas project, and this one the after of this concrete, this article. And next slide. Thank you, your patience. Do you have a, an, any question from internet? Do you have a question? Any? Nazim. Mr. Uh, Suleimanov, V, yes. <laughs> Uh, I have one question. Uh, what does it mean from lepton? How you can separate from lepton? I, I talked about in the beginning of the, our uh, talk. Uh, second slide, three, uh, four, five slides. Three. Because, because as, as we know, if heavy particles, we understand what does it mean from. Okay. But for okay. lepton... Okay, I, I, I give you an... Okay. Okay, I give you an answer. We have a sample which has a after reconstruction. We have a this. Uh, ah, okay, okay. What's this slide? Next slide. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. the one is you start, huh? ah, what? Uh, slide six. You can see sample full simulation sample. This sample has data after reconstructions and information about full truth. That's meaning we know 
no, which no, lived on Prom no, and which not Prom. My question is simple. My question is simple. What a, what a, what a T. What a T for uh, Prom? What is meaning the Prom, non Prom? What a T? What a transfer uh, momentum? Oh, oh. My man, man. Ah, uh, uh, transfer momentum. Ah, uh, you is larger than uh, 10 GV. PT larger than 10 GV. Ah, okay, okay, I understand. Yes. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Any, Any qu questions, please? And from uh, online connection or from audience? No question. Okay. No Thank comment. you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, and let's uh, thanks to Dr. Nazim uh, Sheinov uh, from Jenner for his good talk. Okay, thank you very much. Really, but the main importance, as, as I understand correctly, to reduce background and to increase the signal level. Okay, and next talk is devoted um, to the facade synthesis and structure of germanium nanoparticles and the interaction with body cells. And we kindly invite and Professor Osman Ersoy from Queen Mary University of London, London, United Kingdom. And are you ready, Professor Ersoy? Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Okay, and then and we kindly request you and to give your talk and within 10 minutes, if possible, we kindly request you. Okay, uh, we have a limited number of people and time, please, because the next session also will start here. Okay, next part of the session. Okay, 10 minutes, and we can't ask and to complete your talk, please, if yeah. possible. Yeah, I have to upload my presentation. Uh, please, but... it's okay. Yes. yes. Okay, I'm sorry. We can start, please. Yes. Yes, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Osman Ersoy. I am actually a PhD student at, uh, in the condensed matter and material physics um, at Queen University of London. I am in my third year. I'm at the beginning of my third year. Okay, today I'm going to talk about a part of my PhD project. As you can see from the title, it will be about um, synthesis of germanium quantum dots and its interaction with body cells. First of all, I would like to thank the um, organizing committee, especially Professor Rav Jaffer. Uh, for giving this opportunity to talk here. Now I would like to share my outline with you first. I'm going to introduce my, um, uh, in, in, in the interaction part, I'm going to talk about nanoparticles and what are they and why they are special in terms of you know, quantum confinement effects. Also, in the next part, I'm going to talk about the experimental section where I'm, I will share details of the synthesis part and um, also, after the synthesis, we did characterization to understand what is our materials. And after that, I will talk about uh, results and discussion and give a sample, uh, give example of you know, um, biological applications and future studies. Okay, next slide. Yes, the nanoparticles. Um, are generally, you know, spherical quantum dots. Also, there are triangle and square one, but basically square spherical quantum dots, they are usually semiconductors and they, their electrons is confined in uh, three dimensions. Because of these features, they have a very efficient light emission. Um, also, it's, uh, we can adjust the optical properties by changing their size. They are tunable particles. And because of that, and it's, they have very high potential usage for a lot of applications. As you can see, uh, it's the first application of gold particles in the you know, mice. Um, they have you know, different kind of uh, excellent spectra. And also, this is the picture of, uh, from our lab. We are synthesizing nanoparticles, and when the size is changing, they're um, their light change and their you know um, appearance change. You can, you can see that this 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 is also a picture of um, commercial available cadmium selenide quantum dots, and they are very bright. And most of the people are using their light efficiency features. Um, as I said before, um, they are tunable. When we change the nanoparticle diameter, as you can see this picture, this is the cadmium selenide particles. Their absorption uh, spectra are changing. And we can use specific um, uh, specific applications for that. 
Also, we can change nanoparticle surface. Also, it en enables us to um, play with their absorption spectra. Um, okay, why we are using germanium quantum dots? Because um, uh, um, for a elements of the periodic table, uh, they pro they can provide low toxicity. That's the reason uh, many you know people are using um, semiconductor materials like silicon or germanium. Silicon is the first um, element that scientists discovered the optical properties, and and silicon is used a lot. And this is the picture of silicon, and also annealing silicon particles. We can change the you know uh, absorption and different features as well. Why we use germanium is first I think um, germanium is not uh, germanium is hasn't been studied a lot. We don't know less. We don't know a lot of information about germanium, and also they have very narrow band gap. It's easy to excite electrons in first state and to excite states. Also. Germanium nanoparticles has very large bore radius when we compare it with silicon. It's, it's enables us uh, when we get things reduced the size, we have we are observing more um, optical and optical um, properties of germanium. Also, uh, germanium has non-toxic and very easy to produce. This is the reason we are why we are using germanium particles actually. There are two methods of um, production, main production methods. First of all, top bottom, top down method, which is this. In this case, uh, from a bulk material, we can use um, stain etching or you know electrochemical or vapor deposition or laser ablation. We can break down the particles, and we, we will able to uh, obtain small particles. Or the other method is bottom up technique. In this case, atoms are nucleated in the form of uh, you know, different routes, such as colloidal synthesis, chemical vapor deposition on solder, and so on. In order to produce germanium particles, they are, uh, there are many methods. I choose one of uh, some of them. For example, soldier methods, like stain etching, laser ablation, chemical vapor deposition, are some techniques that we can you know, produce quantum loads. I tried most of them. Uh, but I'm not using them. Why am I not using? For example, in sol gel uh, method, we have to wait for a long time. And also, uh, germanium nanoparticles embedded in silica. Not, for example, after the synthesis, I, I, I'm not able to, you know, obtain as uh, freestanding germanium particles. And also, high uh, requires. For example, in stain etching method, it's very acidic and dangerous and chemical. Um, we have to use very you know, dangerous chemicals, and it's also harmful environments. In terms of laser ablation, we can. We, it's not. Um, it's not providing us to you know to control the particle size. In laser ablation, we have you know um, our bulk material in a vial. We are sending continuous laser beam on it, and we can break down particles. But it's not you know efficient to have a stable particle size. Chemical vapor deposition also, there is a picture here from the lab. And we have to go up to you know, a high temperature, like 500 uh, Celsius degree. And we, we need vacuum environment, and complicated setup is required. What we are using in our lab, it's very easy and facile method, is colloidal synthesis. Colloidal synthesis is uh, size control is important. We can uh, control size uh, precisely. and also, various um, surface termination is possible uh, it, over the core, core of germanium nanoparticles. And also, the, it has different sections like shrink method, high temperature method, and bench top method. So this too is also, you know, as you can see this picture, um, very complicated setup is required. It's difficult. For example, if there is a leak, it's difficult to find and uh, transfers the chemical is also difficult. High temperature also uh, um, it's expensive method. But we are using uh, what we are using is benchtop colloidal method. It's very easy and uh, you can do it in room temperature synthesis. And very short time method. In three hours you are able to produce your particles. And also you know it's freestanding like you know core nanoparticle you can uh, have. Okay, let's have a talk about the detail of our particles. 
we have uh, we are using two methods to produce germane nanoparticles. First of all, first method is colloidal synthesis. I call it CS1, colloidal synthesis one route. In this case, you, you, what you need is three necks, you know, bottle like that. Uh, first, we are um, putting here is like so ethylene glycol and the other, you know, chemicals. I'm not going details a lot. And also, we are using uh, sodium borohydride right, uh, as a precursor. We are just injecting it, and we are dropping sodium borohydride right in different rates during the process. After a, you know, uh, one hour, it changed the color, and after that, I'm able to obtain particles like powder in this image. There are powders on the glass slide here, and I, I also I can have more particles in uh, ethanol or hexane, like, you know, in its uh, liquid form. The second method is also, uh, this is the aqua method. Also, it's, you know, bench top. It's very easy to synthesize, as you can see from the picture. Like, we have uh, our um, mixture of our samples, our elements, like here. And uh, I am using his, I am using here his microbic stirrer um, in, in 60 centigrade degree, like a little bit up to room temperature. And I am stirring it for about an hour. And after that, I am able to obtain my particles like this here in powder. Also, I can suspend in ethanol in liquid. Okay, let's talk about a little bit of results. First of all, in the first method, this is the, in order to understand what we produced, I took a transmission electron microscope pictures. As you can see from the picture here is uh, spherical particles. Size distribution is here is uh, about 3.8. 6 nanometer. Also, I, I took, you know, Raman spectra. What is it? Um, uh, to understand what is it actually. This is the very nice uh, asymmetric peak of, you know, uh, germanium uh, peak, which is around 290. Uh, it's, it tells us, this asymmetric peak tells us it's the nanoparticles. Uh, you know, if it is not asymmetric, we can say it, it's hard to believe that it's not a particle. Actually. Also, we are seeing from the picture, basically. And also, I run XRT experiment. This peak is German peak also. Uh, in the second method, um, also, I took um, TM images of my particles. In this case, the particle size is um, around uh, four. Yeah. Like, and also, I took an, another Raman uh, Spectra to understand what is it actually. It's also another asymmetric uh, peak. This here is the XRT peak of the um, XRT uh, spectra of our particles. Also, it suggests that uh, germanium is uh, is in the core. Here are some uh, optical um, uh, optical analysis of our particles. I here uh, what I did is I, I also took absorption spectra first. This is the absorption spectra of first uh, method. And this is the ex uh, photoluminescence spectroscopy of our particle. It's around 700. I'm not sure I'll be able to read or not, but yeah, it's around 700 nanoparticles. This is the image of um, uh, light is coming out from the, our particles. This is the second uh, photoluminescence um, spectra of my particle for the second method. Okay, after that, um, also I, what I here, I showed that I'm able to change the particle size and also, you know, surface of the particle by annealing the particles. It's uh, after one hour annealing uh, uh, in hydrogen argon um, gas flow. Uh, this is the first, is uh, the, the red one, uh, the black one is a prepared sample. This is the Raman spectra. There is a um, uh, germanium hydrogen here, germanium hydrogen peak is here. But after the annealing, this hydrogen is removed and there is a peak, uh, which indicates that it is the germanium carbon peak. It suggests that uh, after, you know, after the annealing, my particles attach with uh, carbon atoms, surrounded with the carbon atoms, and it's easy to, you know, uh, apply any medical, uh, any biological, you know, precursor uh, like ligands and other stuff, basically. Yeah, after that, uh, we applied more particles to our uh, body cells. We use HeLa, uh, HeLa cells. Here you can see, you know, in different channel, 
you can use we can use um, uh, emission spectra of the particles and in different channels like you know uh, 405 nanometer 488 nanometer uh, 561 nanometer channels you can specifically tune and see the particles interaction with the you know cell also we um, we done with we done uh, in order to understand toxicity effect we have a look um, uh, we did news test which is basically what it means is that we are we put our particles in a cells actually its intake is doing with the cells and also we had a look okay how many cells are died after you know intake we did a comparison um, comparison here in uh, 24 hours and you know during during three days we did some measurements this this one is um, this blue one is germanium particles and this is the red one is um, uh, commercial available um, commercial available cadmium selenide particles as you can see in the first day it's around the same this green one is the you know 10 times uh, more uh, concentrate germanium particles in, in the second day you know in 40, after 48 hours our particles is uh, when we compare it with commercial one it's uh, it's very, it's very nice actually they are not killing cells in the third day as you can see even the, you know 10 times more intense particles are not that much killing the cells actually they are not that much toxic what i'm saying is okay as a conclude uh, as a conclusion we have keratal synthesis uh, and we understand that we are obtaining you know crystalline uh, germanium nanoparticles and also we did some you know uh, luminescent image uh, experiments with you know hella cells also we test toxicity uh, germanium nanoparticles uh, you know um, comparing with uh, carbonyl coated you know um, cadmium selenide and zinc sulfate uh, commercially available nanoparticles uh, we found out that our particles are least toxic uh, when we compare it with these two. Um, after three days, uh, it suggests that uh, our particles can be used in clinical imaging and drug screening um, uh, materials. And I would like to thank my supervisor, Andres Spikin, and my colleagues, and also my sp our sponsors, the so Minister of Education, Premier and Diamond. Um, thank you for your patience. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ersoy, and we are very grateful to you for your interesting talk. And any question from the online connections or from our colleague in uh, uh, Baku State University? Any questions, please? Any questions? Can we go back to three slides? Back. Can you go back to three slides? Go, 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 go back. Go. Okay, stop here. But no, no, no. Next, next. Okay. But here you uh, see, discuss about maximum around 1,050 centimeters. Okay. But uh, but I think maybe it is some interference picture. No. I'm Sorry? sure that it is, it is something. Uh, but this this peak. This peak, very yeah. like interference peak between. It is interference peak. This, this peak, right? You are talking about germanium carbon peak. Yeah. I, I am talking about this peak. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's not that much. It's not it's not a that much sharp peak. But when I you know search from the um, literature. There is a carbon germanium peak exists around 1450, 1450 nanometer around this region. But yeah, as you can see, it's not that much. It's not precise saying that. But the but the you know basic thing is that uh, what uh, what we can say yeah, that. Yeah, that's why it is not uh, interference. Okay, I understand. Yeah, yeah. But what we are basically yeah. saying. Thank you very much. Yeah, hydrogen. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. If there is no another question, then let's applaud Professor Ersoy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay.
Uh, I'm greeting you and uh, the, the listener from uh, internet and the audience from the Baku State University. And uh, this work was done actually by uh, Dr. Rasmir Gasumova, and uh, who is from our collaboration. But today uh, she uh, is not able to participate here, and she requested me to give talk on behalf of her. But I try to answer your question at the end if I am able to answer your questions. Therefore, my mission is to give this talk and on behalf of Professor Ras uh, Dr. Rasmia Gasumova, uh, with your permission. Okay. But uh, the topic of today's uh, of this talk and back slide, okay, please, uh, back slide, okay. Uh, as you noted that uh, the first slide, the first one, okay, yeah, okay. Yes, this is the. Uh, um, Annihilation, okay? Annihilation neutrino and neutrino, no, no, no. Uh, muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos, and at the same time, tau neutrinos, we mean. Muon neutrinos or tau neutrinos and electron antineutrinos into muons, taus, and positrons. And, uh, uh, the case of transverse polarization, okay? And in this topic, and uh, uh, it is uh, uh, investigated uh, the transverse polarization case that we mean that they, they produce muons, taons, or positrons uh, are transversely polarized. Okay, and here we uh, investigate. Here the author investigate the uh, annihilation of uh, different flavor of neutrinos and antineutrinos, and this uh, process is proceed. Uh, we are the uh, W boson, uh, W boson. We are the charged uh, neutral current, uh, charge, uh, sorry, charge uh, weak currents. Next slide, please. Okay. And recently, Pamela and AMS 02 experiments has uh, registered the positron abundance, positron excess in the cosmic rays. Okay. And the energy of the positrons and, uh, is registered between 20 GeV and 300 GeV. And the, the behavior of positron spectra, spectra and electron spectra beginning from the 20 G, GeV, around 2030, and uh, behaves themselves differently for electrons and for positrons. And the question is that, and where is this uh, abundant excess of positrons? And this uh, was registered, the positron excess, uh, uh, positron excess was uh, registered by Pamela and, as we indicated, AMS02 experiment. Next slide, please. Next slide. No better. Next. Okay. Uh, uh, before it, uh, about the uh, Okay, and the indicated reaction here is one of the possible sources of cosmic charged leptons, uh, cosmic uh, charged leptons. And here on the right side of the reaction, we mean uh, uh, under the uh, letter L, uh, muon and tau, uh, with the negative sign, and uh, nu L means that the muon neutrino and tau neutrino. This is one of the possible uh, possible sources of cosmic charged leptons, uh, muons, taons, and positrons of high energy, or maybe super high energies. And therefore, this reaction is uh, very uh, attracts our uh, attracted uh, uh, or has importance for in investigation. Next one, please. Okay, uh, next one. And uh, this, uh, these processes here, uh, uh, two processes are investigated. And uh, uh, in the results of the neutrino, muon neutrino and electron and neutrino muons and positrons are produced. And in the second reactions, and tau lepton and positrons are produced in the annihilation of tau neutrino and electron antineutrinos. All these processes have been proceed in strongly magnetized hot uh, magnetized medium and stellar medium. Next one, please. Okay. And the purpose of this work is to investigate investigate the indicated reaction and initial reaction when the initial neutrinos and antineutrinos uh, moves uh, uh, moves on the plane or x y 
and perpendicular to the z-axis, which is assumed to be directed along the uh, z-axis. The direction of magnetic field and the z-axis coincide here. And here, uh, uh, it is uh, the aim is to determine the uh, low Landau levels on which the muons and position can be produced to determine the Landau levels where muons and positrons or tau leptons and positrons can be produced. Next one, please. Okay, and uh, the, uh, the cross-section of this uh, reaction is uh, determined by this expression. And uh, uh, here, uh, the Fermi Dirac distribution function of uh, final charged leptons and positrons uh, have been taken into account. And uh, uh, here, T5, uh, where is the indicator, please? OK, T5 is the uh, coefficient which contains uh, spins of the particles, final charged leptons. And I and uh, I, uh, this other I squared is the Laguerre functions, Laguerre functions. And here, G Fermi, Fermi constant, H magnetic field strength, and this is the parameter characterizes magnetic field. H zero L is the parameter, uh, is the magnetic field strength is approximately 10 in power 19 Gauss. Next one, please. Okay, and uh, also, and uh, in the previous reaction. E, uh, I, e I prime it, uh, is uh, energy of positrons and prime it belongs to uh, muons and PZ, Z component of the momentum of uh, muons and PZ prime uh, momentum of uh, uh, positrons, uh, sorry, PZ belongs to positrons, PZ prime belongs to muons or talons. And FL minus is Fermi Dirac distribution function of charged leptons. Uh, F electron plus belongs to positrons. It, uh, so it, it, it's the Fermi Dirac function of positron gas. Next one, please. Next slide, please. And uh, uh, differential uh, cross section of the process contains the Laguerre function and uh, whose uh, our argument is x, which is determined by this expression. And here, theta is azimuthal angle of the momentum of initial neutrinos, prime theta prime initial antineutrinos, uh, polar angle of the momentum of initial antineutrinos. Also, alpha alpha prime are the, uh, are the uh, uh, azimuthal angle of initial neutrino momentum, alpha prime, the azimuthal angle of the initial antineutrino momentum. Omega is the energy of muon neutrino or tau neutrino. Omega prime is the energy of electron antineutrino. Next slide, please. And uh, we indicated, we have noted that a T5 is the spin uh, is the coefficient which contains the spins of the particles. Here, zeta is the spin, the projection of the spin of positrons. Zeta prime is the uh, projection of the spin of muons or tau, tau leptons. And the uh, new and new primed are parameters. And beta and beta primed also are parameters. And E and E primed are the energies of charged leptons in a magnetic field. And a magnetic field are, is assumed to be homogeneous and constant. Next one, please. Okay, and also zeta and zeta prime. Okay, we indicate this, uh, zeta uh, is a projection of the spin of positron. Zeta has this uh, has the value plus one or minus one. And uh, since we consider the uh, transverse polarization in this case, it means that when zeta is plus, it means that spin is oriented along the magnetic field. It means that it is perpendicular to the momentum, uh, uh, positron momentum. And when zeta is minus, it, is, it means that the uh, spin of positron is directed against or opposite to the magnetic field direction. At the same time, it is perpendicular to the momentum of electron. Zeta prime belongs to, uh, belong to muons or towns. And uh, uh, we indicate uh, it, uh, it, it is derived that so uh, the function 
i, uh, the Laguerre function, and when x is zero, uh, it distinguish from zero when the uh, when delta n, it is the difference of uh, Landau, uh, the principal quantum number n and n primate. N is the uh, quantum number which uh, describes the energy level, Landau energy levels. And N prime is the Landau quantum number, or the quant principal quantum number uh, which describes uh, Landau level for positron, for muons or tau leptons. Then delta N, the difference, this quantum principal quantum number is plus. In that case, Laguerre function is not zero. Only delta n is plus one. If it is minus one, uh, the Laguerre function is zero and the processes uh, stop. It. Next slide, please. Okay. And when delta n is plus one, uh, in that case, the reaction uh, has such cross section. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. But uh, we have. Uh, it was derived that. Uh, but uh, only muons, uh, positrons and muons, or positrons or tau leptons are produced uh, uh, in that case. When, uh, when positrons are produced on the first Landau level, uh, muons produce on the zero Landau level. Or uh, po when positrons are produced uh, in the second Landau level, muons or tau leptons are produced on the first Landau level. But uh, if you, uh, you can see from here that the number n for positron is one unit more than the uh, quantum number n prime. Okay? And, but uh, uh, next one, please. And here we see that. Next slide, please. We see that positrons are produced, uh, are produced on the, or can only be produced on the first Landau level, second Landau level, third Landau level. But muons can be produced on the ground Landau level, first Landau level, second Landau level. From here we see that uh, positrons cannot be produced on the uh, zero Landau level, on the ground Landau level. Ground Landau level. Uh, then muons are produced on the uh, ground Landau level. Positrons are produced on the first Landau level. Next one, please. It means that uh, the pr uh, production of muons or taons on the uh, ground Landau level is impossible, is uh, prohibited, uh, is uh, dis uh, allowed. But uh, the, the uh, lowest level where muons or tau leptons can be produced is the first Landau level. The first, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Okay, the lowest Landau level where muons or charged leptons can be produced is the uh, ground Landau level. But for the positrons, the lowest level is the first Landau level. Next one, please. Uh, what does it mean? For muons, for muons, n prime is zero when muons or tau leptons are on the ground Landau level, these quantum numbers are satisfied. It means that when muons produce, uh, muons are produced on the ground Landau level, their energy is equal their rest mass. Their rest mass. Now let's suppose that if uh, muons, in the final state we have muon and positrons, or tau lepton and positrons. Muon are produced, muons are produced on the ground Landau level. It means that their energy is equal to their rest mass. They do not have additional energy or additional kinetic energy. They have not, they are not able to move in the median. But positrons are produced, next slide please. Positrons are produced on the first Landau level. On the first Landau level. It is derived from the third uh, component of the momentum. This is PZ component, okay? What uh, we have received in the result. In the result we have received that uh, the produced, the produced positrons have the zero energy or the minimal energy. They are not able to move and they stay, they stay in the medium, but the produced positrons have high energy relativistic. They leave, they leave the medium. They leave medium and they are, uh, <clears throat> they contribute to the cosmic rays, but muons and tau leptons 
leaves in the magnetized media. So it turns out that we have uh, we have contribution we have contribution uh, to the cosmic rays at the expense of positrons, but not at the expense of uh, muons, because muons stays there, leave uh, 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 muons stay there, not leave. Uh, muon uh, are not muons are not able to leave the uh, magnetized medium. Next one, please. But uh, the muons, uh, which are produced at the expense of these reactions, are emitted to the cosmos, okay, to the space, and they contribute to the cosmic rays, cosmic high energy particles, but uh, positrons, uh, sorry, sorry, other particles, charged leptons, muons, tunnels, uh, stay there, okay? Next one, please. Next slide, please. And we have indicated that the, the energies, the characteristic energy for um, uh, for uh, positrons is between 20 GeV and 200 GeV, which are met in the cosmic rays. And uh, but such energies, uh, then in positrons with this energy can be only magnetic fields with the, in the magnetic field with this strength. Okay, we have calculated. We have found that the uh, intensity that the sources, the magnetized sources with this intensity, with this strength, can only produce the positrons of such energy, okay? Because neutrinos, initial neutrinos have such energy, given energies, okay? But uh, in any case, then electrons, <coughs> electrons should gain such energy. Electrons only should gain such energy in a magnetic field with this strength. But it means that uh, the... Uh, 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 magnetized uh, magnetized object, astrophysical or cosmic objects should exist in the space. But these objects, the objects, magnetized objects with this magnetic strength can emit, can emit positrons of this energy, of this energy. Next one, please. So, the uh, conclusion. So, uh, they observed positron excess, positron excess or abundance, uh, or one of the sources, one of the sources positron excess observed by Pamela and AMS 02 experiment, one of the sources can be the in, uh, investigated reaction, uh, the uh, annihilation of uh, the different types of neutrino in, into charged leptons, muons and positrons, or towns or positrons. And uh, the sources of this object should have such uh, magnetic field. The, mag the magnetic field should uh, uh, contain such uh, field strength. Ten in power 22 Gauss or 24 Gauss. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Any questions, please? Thank you very much. Dr. Next. Uh, yeah, have you? Have a question, please. Hello. Uh, I have one question. So I would say, uh, you say about the magnetic field. Can we now get in experiment all these fields, for example? In experiment? Yes. Well, in the terrestrial condition, you mean, yes? Yeah, no, I, I, I mean it's theoretical evaluation. Yes, yes. you can calculate this. Can yes. we uh, receive this uh, magnetic field in next experiment? For example, in the world, I don't know. In the world? No, in some experiment, I don't know. But in the... Uh, you, you just figure uh, field, value field, magnetic field. Yes. yes? Can we get this magnetic field, for example? Some yes. Field. Yes, yes, receive. We receive such magnetic field. In which experiment, for example? If I understood your question correctly, and you asked that, can we uh, can, can we image can some or not? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's av available now. Oh, okay. Yes, I say that. In the uh, terrestrial condition, by bombing method or the impulsive method, only 10 in power 7 or 8 yes. is produced. So. But in uh, heavy ion, non-central heavy ion collisions, 
and uh, when the chiral magnetic field effect is observed, it is not exploded 10 in power 20 pulse is produced when um, the quarks are uh, directed along one line, okay? It is not exploded. It is uh, uh, indicated by Harze, McLaren, and Kibirkov uh, or other people, okay? Yes. But uh, in the uh, cosmos, uh, the, uh, for example, there is paper written by Witten, okay? Uh, uh, there should exist in the field uh, higher 10 in power 20 gauss. For example, in the uh, around the cosmic sphere strings, there should exist 10 in power 46, 47 gauss. It's possible. In magnetars, in magnetars, it is uh, there should exist uh, 10 in power 15 gauss, 15 gauss. But normally, when uh, uh, Electroweak symmetry breaking is restorated, uh, it is required 10 in power 24 gauss. But our limit is less than 24 gauss, between 22 and 24 gauss. Okay. Why we take this one uh, on the other hand? Because when it's, it's Schwinger, uh, uh, for example, Schwinger uh, field intensity, in that case, muons cannot be produced in the low lambda level. They should, uh, uh, should be produced on the high lambda level, but it is not uh, the case here. Okay, therefore we take such a uh, high magnetic bit and it is derived from the estimation, normal physical estimation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any question from online? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Senor. <coughs> Next report by Dr. Mamed, yo, sorry, Dr. Mamedov, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. From Institute for Physical Problems, Baku State University. One of our leading scientists. Okay. Yes, 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 Okay. Thank you for giving the uh, possibility of giving the talk. Uh, Actually, actually, uh, we prepared this call for for process. So, <laughs> just uh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, I will, I will here present some uh, small my uh, our, our results uh, because uh, until this conference we we participated in several conferences and gave uh, extended talks. The, so uh, we 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 work in. In, in the in the field of uh, holographic QCD, so there is two approaches in holographic QCD, as you know, top down and bottom up uh, approach. We uh, we usually deal with uh, bottom up approach. There are two models in bottom up approach. We, uh, main two main models. There is several models. Uh, Soft wall and hard wall models. Uh, this is holographic QCD. Uh, there is uh, five in the bulk, uh, in the bulk of uh, five dimensional ADS space. Oh, next slide. Okay. There are, there are uh, left and right uh, gauge feeds in the bulk of uh, ADS, five dimensional ADS space. And uh, besides um, complex scalar C, C, five, and um, so uh, action action for this is the usual, uh, are defined in the usual way, and uh, axial vector fields 
Uh, field uh, is defined by means of left and right uh, uh, edge fields. And uh, if the right uh, explicitly uh, gave action for uh, gauge field and uh, uh, phi field, phi, phi field we need for, uh, in order to break uh, the chiral symmetry issue to left across issue right. Is it right? Uh, so this is action for for the uh, phi field, uh, which includes uh, p phi and uh, first that, uh, we shall correspond to to this field uh, phi in the on the boundary of a space. So uh, next slide. Okay. So we compose in, in such a way a uh, complex, complex uh, uh, components of vector field, uh, vector, the actual vector field, and uh, interior components. Okay, next slide. Okay. So um, the question of motion for, for the A1 field, actual vector field. It has such a form. Explicitly, uh, explicitly, if right in uh, in Poincaré coordinates, uh, Poincaré coordinate, uh, edge space. Uh, this equation is this explicit form, and in. Uh, uh, in moment of space, we apply how to plan the, the composition. The composition. First, we can consider, uh, in order to solve uh, this uh, solution, we can consider ignoring uh, this condensate term, usually. In this feature, usually, uh, usually we use uh, ignoring, ignoring this uh, condensate term. And solve uh, the situation, and the uh, solution is usual uh, Bessel function, Bessel function, and uh, we we wanted to somehow to include this uh, this uh, condensate term in the solution also. So as you know, uh, we deal with a hard wall model. So in hard wall model, we have uh, two. Uh, to uh, limits infrared and uh, ultraviolet, ultraviolet boundaries. So uh, we we have decided to solve uh, to solve this equation at uh, infrared and uh, at uh, ultraviolet uh, limits. So in such a way to find uh, approximate approximate solutions. Uh, somehow, next slide. Uh, okay, we take uh, values. Uh, this, these values of uh, these values of uh, these terms. We see that uh, one value uh, by z i r squared is more than uh, this term. The previous, please. Okay. So in the in the equation we see that uh, this term, term uh, in fact uh, even at the IR limit uh, less than this uh, this term. So in this limit, so we can uh, solve. Oh, okay. So uh, solution is again this uh, function. This function. Uh, kind of solution. So, but here uh, mass must include uh, condensate term also, and uh, we can uh, write it uh, approximately. So, finally, uh, profile function for axial vector field, uh, which includes condensate term also, as a such a simple form as usual one. Uh, Solution uh, distinct from earlier ones by just only uh, that, uh, 
mass, the mass coefficient, it contains <coughs> this condensate that okay. in such a form of approximation, we take into account the equation also. <coughs> okay, thank you for attention. Oh, Okay, thank you, uh, Professor Mamedov. Okay, any questions from online connection or from audience? Any question, please? If there is no question, and let's uh, applaud Professor Mamedov for his interesting talk. Thank you very much. Break, and, and after uh, 15 minutes, and uh, there will be connection, and the next session will start. Mr. Tabahira, we connected after 15 minutes. We have a break, coffee break. After 15 minutes, we connect and we're waiting you participate in our conversations. We're waiting you talking, yes?